Hi guys, my name is Rachel and I am back with another rendition of Project Profit. Look, I underlined it. It's been a while. Oh, Facebook Marketplace. What else is new? This is a series that I've been working on where I find free or low cost secondhand items with the goal of trying to flip them for some cash. And all profits I do make will be donated to different charitable causes throughout the series. Now let's get into it because today I have another light idea that I really wanna try. And you know, I just realized something. I realized I just love making lights because I realized just how many I've made. And even in the last episode, if you missed it, I made this gorgeous modern Scandinavian weaved pendant light. It's definitely one of my new favorites. And guess what? We ended up selling this pendant for $150, which brings our new project profit grand total to $2,245.32. So I'm definitely glad I ended up holding out on a better offer for this one. But I think my ultimate favorite would have to be the flower pot lamp. Sometimes I still get surprised that even I made that. But I show you how to make these all very high quality and very budget friendly. So if you missed any of those, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You won't miss any more. So for the next DIY, I've been feeling really inspired by these cocoon style pendant lights. Now these come in a variety of shapes and styles, but they actually rose to popularity in the 1960s. And I've been seeing them recirculate online. The first time I think I saw one actually was in Troy Sivan's AD tour, if you saw that. Might not have been the first time, but definitely was looking at it and was like, you know what? You're cool. Definitely seems a bit challenging to make, especially if I wanna go with like a unique shape, but I think it'd be really cool if I could figure this out. So similar to last episode, I'm gonna start by heading to the thrift store, looking for two lampshades. And again, I want two that have the same circumference at the base. I will say, last time I went to That Value Village, they had a lot more lampshade options, but I did luck out. Thankfully, I found two almost matching. Also, can we just laugh at how I found two, two, two sisters, not twins, <laughs> and only $2.49 each. Pretty awesome. And now I'm going to take these inside to get rid of these adorned shades. There we go. Got the one. Okay. <laughs> Finally. It's a bit off, but it really shouldn't matter. Maybe it will become helpful. I'm not really sure yet. I have the option to like line up these spokes here, so I'm gonna do that also. Then I'm just going to attach this in the center with some wire. Okay, this feels, feels nice and secure. So our base is secured and it's not going anywhere and I feel like this is a good start for our cocoon structure to build upon. So I found these wire hangers at home and my only plan right now was actually thinking of a way to manipulate these somehow, to attach them to here and create this sort of unique skeleton that ultimately creates our cocoon shade. Now I just need to find a way to attach these and one that is both aesthetically pleasing and structurally, structurally sound. So figure that out now. Then the bulb, the bulb needs to sit somewhere. Um, come on. Come on. And this is stuck. Ooh, wait. Do you see this? It could be like something like this. So after some trial and error, I believe I have a plan to move forward. And from the hangers, I decided on a pattern like this. In the end, I'm hoping it will create a sort of wing shape. But first of all, I don't think these wire hangers are gonna cut it. So I'm bringing in some thicker wire that I found in our storage room. This is some galvanized wire that is 24 gauge, and it is a lot stronger than the hangers will be. And since this wire has some bend to it already, to make a precise measurement, I'm gonna use a sewing measuring tape. 
This is specific to me, but I'm trimming my pieces to 26.5 inches. And to help me manipulate the wire, I'm gonna go in with two different sets of pliers, one that will cut and some that are a flat nose to help me bend. Then I measure 2.5 inches in from the end, lining up the pliers to make my first bend. And repeat that on the other side. Then measuring from the end again, this time 5.5 inches in, I'll make another bend like so. And repeat. And if everything's gone correctly, this middle section should be 15 inches, and I'll just bend in the center one more time. And now I'm left with a shape like this. And now I'll just be spending some time carefully straightening and flattening it out. The real secret is to actually try and bend it as little as possible. It's hard to go back on a bend once it's made. Now to attach this, I'm going in with some electrical tape and I'll align the piece I made with the inner spokes on our frame. Now that I have the tape on pretty tight, before I go to wrap this whole piece here, I'm gonna add a little bit of industrial strength adhesive. Just a little to connect our two wires. And then I'm gonna wrap the tape around that glue. And now we have something like this. Okay, so our base skeleton is all finished and this is the shape that we've landed on. I wanted to add these kind of sharper corners just to create some interesting shapes in the end. And I have no idea if this is actually gonna pan out the way I would like it to. My next idea was to simply just throw a nylon stocking over this whole structure. And I'm starting to think that that might not happen the way I would like it to. So there's only really one way to find out. Let me go grab that sock. Okay, so I got my nylon and pretty much this is just a pair of tights and these ones are in a cream color, which I thought would be nice for this. And these might have a couple holes. It doesn't really matter anymore because I don't think these are gonna work. What did I think was gonna happen? <laughs> That's like just the foot. <laughs> okay, there's the body part where it goes around the middle. What if I go from the bottom and hug it towards me? Can you wait? Can you wait? <laughs> Don't get crazy now. Just get a little crazy. But not too crazy. If I only had like four more hands right now, I really need like a body. Ah, what's happening? <laughs> Am I ruining it? Am I ruining all my hard work? Okay, so clearly this stocking is too tight and it's bending all my arms. But, you know what? Okay, so honestly, <laughs> the sun is starting to go down. I clearly have a lot to figure out here. So let's pick this back up at a later time. I'm determined to make it work. It's gonna work. All right, so I need to figure out this shape today and it's looking like I'm gonna have to sew something. So right now I'm on my way to the fabric store and I wanna see what kind of stretchy options they have. I love coming to this fabric store. They have so many options. So I sorted through anything they had in a sort of off-white color. Some definitely had better stretches than others, but I think I found an interesting one. So I got them to cut a yard and it was actually really affordable. This whole yard only cost me about $6, which is cheaper than new nylons. I brought it back to the studio and I chose this one because it had a solid four-way stretch good coverage in terms of translucency, and I thought I actually had a really nice texture to it also. So before we jump into this, there are actually a couple updates on this. So because we put two shades together, using my cutoff tool, I actually cut off the lampshade fitter from the bottom so that it isn't seen from under the pendant. I didn't do this last time I made the weaved pendant light, and it was something I wish I did, but I went ahead and painted the whole base white. I feel like this should help it blend when it's under the shade. And speaking of shades, Let's get to patterning. Before I can figure out anything though, I've gotta take some measurements. So I spent some time doing that, as well as sketching some potential patterns. 
I also needed to get a good feel for this fabric because the way that it's stretching and how unique the shape of the shade is, this is the moment I realized that I'll probably be needing to add a drawstring. But I digress. I've created this hexagon-like pattern to mimic the bends in the metal, and I'm cutting out two matching panels. Then just adding some pins before running it through the sewing machine. Now, I'm not the most advanced at sewing, but one thing I do know, because we're using a stretchy material, I'll be going in with a zigzag stitch. And as for the top and bottom where the drawstring will go, I've just did a basic hem with a straight stitch. And a little hack to pull the cord through, if this ever happens to your hoodie or your sweatpants, adding a little safety pin to the end will help to feed it through. I think we have a shade, but I really hope it works because I'm out of fabric. Remember when I said how much I love making lights? No, I actually still feel that way. Like This troubleshooting kind of business, I genuinely enjoy. I do. I've already done this a couple of times and I already know I'm gonna need some help, so. Hey, Rashi. You know the drill. Yeah, you know, let's do it. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. Okay, so. We stretch, we stretch. Me chin, me chin. Me chin, me chin. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Oh no. Okay. Yeah? What if I get here? I'll leave a <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay. Oh right. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. So obviously, as you can tell, these still move quite a bit, but I can promise you, once they're in place, they do actually stay. Everyone just needs to go back to their assigned seats, please. And then all I need to do <laughs> is put this one back. Is it working? Where are we? Working? So a couple things I'm noticing are, because we had to add a drawstring, we're definitely losing a little bit of the shape that was like potentially gonna happen in these interesting corners. But given the fact that we do need all this extra fabric up here, I do think this is the cleanest way to have gone about this. Other than that, I think it actually was pretty successful. I'm trying to think what else I could have used to cover it. And in a perfect world, I would have like shrunk wrapped this whole thing. And we would have gotten all these interesting details. Now I am just dying to get this thing installed so we can see the finished look. Overall, we know I had some struggles with this one, and I'm not sure if it completely embodies my inspo images. Regardless, it was actually really fun challenging myself here. I am happy with how it turned out, and I think it has a store-bought quality to it, but of all the things that I've made, it's definitely the most DIY. Does that make sense? Like of all the DIYs, it's the most DIY. Let's get this DIY posted on Facebook Marketplace, and stay tuned to see if this bad boy even sells. All right, for my next upcycle idea, I'm taking you back to this little clip from the summer when I found this little lady on the side of the road. So she was free and triple P. Hey now, that rhymed, okay. I feel like I see secondhand chairs like this pretty often. It's just a basic office chair, maybe from the early 2000s or late 90s. And right now, it has an interesting chrome body, but the rest is definitely just a little lackluster. Okay, so I do have a plan for this, and this plan should be simple, I think. And this isn't, an, I think, like the nylons where I thought that could be simple. I knew that the nylon tights were gonna be a risky decision. This should be simple. So what I wanna try here is to actually do a no-sew reupholstering hack. And I do have a little drawing. It's not exactly what I want it to look like, but it's close. The goal is to take two matching throw pillows and apply one to the seat and one to the backrest but we'll trim the backrest so that it's a little bit shorter and then hopefully the pillow will actually fold over the backrest and create a little bit more visual interest. And hopefully this goes from basic office to stunning statement piece. 
I don't know. <laughs> I'll really know if this is gonna be simple as soon as we start disassembling this chair. So let's take it apart and see what we got. Now that the chair is disassembled, let's take off the old upholster. Got some nails. Careful. Okay, I want to get a satisfying like rip sound, so hopefully this is it. Okay, not satisfying. We're just gonna cut. <laughs> Let's remove the foam, even though you're kind of nice. No, yes, no, it's kind of gross. Well, let's just take it, we're just gonna. Please don't tell me there's more staples under here. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course there is. Right, so if there's one thing I've learned throughout this series, it's that the amount that I'm probably gonna sell this chair for and the amount of time that it's probably gonna take me to remove all those staples are not worthwhile. And I can hide them and it will be fine. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna ignore those. This way. No. <laughs> and with a small amount of resistance, finally got that fabric off. I decided to leave the foam on the seat piece really just for comfort. And as for the backrest, I still want to trim it down, but I did notice it has this metal plate. It's really just for the hardware to reattach later, so I definitely don't want to get rid of it. And luckily, I can actually just trim around it. So first, I'm just marking where I want to cut, and then I'll clamp it to the table before going in with my circular saw. Wait a second. <laughs> um, you know, it's better to cut more after, so just in case. Okay. Okay, really happy with the size of this backrest and I can always fill in that little oopsie with some wood filler later if need be. Okay, I feel like things are going pretty smooth, but now it's time to see if our pillowcase hack is gonna work. And I know you just saw a little tease a second ago, but there's something important to consider here and it's that both the seat and the backrest are 17 inches wide. So I needed a pillowcase that was close to this and definitely not smaller. Now in an ideal world, I would have found these secondhand and I definitely did try, but after a few tries and then a couple stores, Unfortunately, I couldn't find a size that would work. So I hate to admit, but I did have to order some. But I did decide to go with this set of matching shams. They are 18 by 18 inches and got both of them for just under $16 which is nice for keeping our costs down. And you know, I thought that this gold mustardy color would look really nice against the chrome. All right, let's try the seat first. Okay. So, the pillowcase is the perfect size. So it's not that the pillowcase is the wrong size, it's that the zipper hole isn't wide enough. I think if I just open up this little end, it will fit around here. Oh, I hope. Oh, I hope. Please hold for some light surgery. Okay, I got myself an extra inch. Now where were we? Don't make me open up this whole corner, please. Please don't make me take out the zipper. Make me open up the whole corner. Please. Please. Okay, I need more room. All right, more surgery. Please stand by. Oh, we're not just gonna make it. Oh, I think we're just gonna make it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The fit is actually great. I know it is a bit loose right now, but I do want to add a bit more stuffing in here. And I think this is gonna work. Before we go to add the stuffing, let's even see if this backrest is gonna work. So you're actually gonna technically sit down here. So it sits in the bottom like this, and then I fold it over, and now all it really needs is some stuffing. So 
This is our nice fluffy bag. So, put it back inside. But I'm actually gonna take our like Lucy guy and I'm going to shove it up into the top. So I'm gonna zip this up and I just wanna test this for a sec. Okay, concept kind of proven, definitely needs more stuffing and I totally think we can lose that extra inch. That's what this whole process is about, trial and error. Please pause for more surgery. Oh, now you don't wanna come out. Oh, now you don't wanna come out. And then let's try that fold one more time. Okay, yeah, it needs some finessing still, but that feels much better. I am definitely happy with how things are going now, but I don't wanna give too much away. So I'm gonna add some more stuffing and then I think we're ready to put this thing back together. Once the backrest was stuffed, I just needed to track down the front flap so it was nicely secured. And then I just cut some holes in the pillowcase so I could attach it back to the chair. I am so happy with how this DIY turned out. Can you believe this chair was just going to be thrown away? Now it's ready to have a new life in someone else's home. Let's take some photos and get it posted on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, so updates. Unfortunately, we weren't able to sell the cocoon light, and I think that might make this our first project profit flop, but no worries, I'm not gonna win all of these, and I'm going to see if anyone else in the office would like to keep it, and if not, we'll just reuse it for parts later. I'm actually super curious what you guys think I could have done differently, or any ideas that you have for me at all. Please leave those in the comments down below. I actually would try this again. The chair though, it did sell thankfully, and I ended up getting $100 for the chair, but I will have to account for what was spent on the light, as well as the chair, and thankfully we still profited here. And it brings our new project profit grand total to $2,317.64. Obviously not the greatest profits we've made in this series, but I can't win them all. And please keep leaving those comments which nonprofit or charitable organizations you think this money could go to. I do wanna say thank you so much for watching today's video, and I hope you enjoyed coming through this creative process with me. If you missed the last episode, please go check that out because I made the string pendant light, and hopefully I can redeem my light making skills here just a little bit, okay? <laughs> See you next time, guys. And then I just kept wrapping. I kept wrapping and wrapping and I wrapped and wrapped and I weaved and I wrapped and I weaved and I wrapped. <laughs>